Hi, I'm Sasha, a keeper at Taronga Western Plains Zoo. Here at our zoo we have two elderly white-handed gibbons, both in their early 40s. They were originally born in Melbourne Zoo and joined us here in the early 80s. They have lived together most of that time as gibbons are a monogamous species, generally finding a mate for life. Gibbons are lesser apes. There are many ways to tell apes apart from monkeys, but the most obvious is that apes do not have tails. Don't forget that humans are part of the great ape family, so we're not too distant from our gibbon friends. There are 19 species of gibbon, and all of them are found throughout Southeast Asia. White-handed gibbons, also known as the La gibbon, are medium-sized members of the family and are mostly found throughout Thailand and Malaysia. In the wild, all gibbons' preferred habitat is rainforest, but they are sometimes found in bamboo forests as well. Here they live an arboreal life, meaning that they spend all their time in the forest canopy. You'll hardly ever see a wild gibbon on the ground, as they are vulnerable to predators there. Climbing trees all day may sound tiring, but these gibbons have some great adaptations to make life in the trees easier. Their thumbs begin quite far back, allowing their fingers and hands to form hooks, which are very useful for low effort climbing. The swinging motion that gibbons use to travel is called brachiation, and is a very energy efficient way to travel across the treetops. Another excellent adaptation that gibbons have is in their wrist. In humans, the joint that connects the top of your leg to your hip is called a ball and socket joint. It allows you to move your leg around in every direction with ease. You'll quickly notice that our wrists do not allow the same range of movement, but gibbon wrists do because they also have a ball and socket joint there. Both brachiation and these wrist adaptations are unique to gibbons. In the forest, they live in small family groups from two to five individuals. They spend most of their day foraging for food, which is mostly fruit, but also leaves, flowers and insects. In the mornings and the afternoons, they will sing a territorial call, which can be heard over long distances. Here at the zoo, we have two species of gibbon and they sound very different to one another. Our Siamangs are actually the second loudest primate on the planet, beaten only by the howler monkeys. Unfortunately, these charismatic creatures are suffering in the wild. Like so many other species, they have lost most of their habitat and are frequently poached for the pet and tourist trades. While observing our beautiful white-handed gibbons, you'll likely see them grooming each other, resting, and if you're lucky, you'll even hear their musical call. If you're in another part of the zoo and you hear something that sounds like a car alarm, followed by a stunning vibrato, that's them. You can tell these two gibbons apart by their appearance and personality. The male is more buff, especially in his arms, and has a squarer face. He also loves showing off to people. The female doesn't pay much attention to visitors, but you can often see her catching flies and other insects with impressive speed. These two have earned their retirement, and we hope they enjoy their relaxed life, free from the knowledge that their wild cousins aren't doing so well. To find out what you can do to help wild gibbons, go to Taronga's website and search for the They're Calling On You campaign.